I always liked to draw. It wasn't just a free time activity for me as a kid. It was also a way to pass time in school whenever they were explaining something I already knew, something I simply wasn't interested in. As you can imagine, teachers didn't like it. They thought my drawing was useless. And uh, back then, they didn't use fancy terms like attention deficiency disorder. They simply thought I was stupid. <laughs> and uh, so at some point, one of the teachers had enough. I had to go to a psychologist uh, who was supposed to confirm their hypothesis that I was stupid so I can be sent to a special school for kids like me. And indeed, they found I was not normal. They found my disability was not IQ deficiency, but the fact that I was gifted. And they did send me to a special school for kids like me. And there, no question that I asked was considered stupid. Instead, the teachers were helping me to develop my curiosity. And uh, instead of forcing me to memorize things that were repeated to me over and over, the teachers cared about my interests. Also, those that elsewhere would be considered uh, useless, like drawing. There was one teacher who made me particularly interested in the subject matter. He was my computer science teacher. In his free time, he was programming all sorts of visual effects just for fun. And he showed me how to do it. And I was fascinated. Suddenly, I had a completely new canvas in front of me, the computer screen. And this gave me endless possibilities. I could draw the most complex shapes by simply telling the computer what to do. I learned so many things, and I could experiment. I learned that if I take every point on the screen and take its coordinates and apply simple mathematical operation on them and tell the computer, use that as a color, I could touch a picture. Or if I tell the computer to repeat few simple rules, I can draw a tree. Some randomness can make it look more realistic. And if I play around with the parameters, I can get something completely crazy. Few more formulas, and I could build entire worlds. Although totally useless, it was fascinating to me that I can make such images with few simple lines of code. That's how I got into computer graphics. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter. I'm from Slovakia, and I'm a researcher at the Technical University of Vienna. Uh, let me give you some examples of uh, what we deal with in my daily work. So my research field is uh, scientific visualization. We help scientists from different domains to understand and analyze their complex data. We do this by creating computer algorithms which turn the data into easily understandable images. And let me tell you about uh, one particular challenge that we faced. It was when we were working with molecular biologists. See, molecular biology gives us insights into how life works on the most fundamental level. Scientists in this field are studying macromolecules, such as proteins or nucleic acids, the essential building blocks of uh, everything that is living. And they already know a lot about them, but they still learn something new every day. Incredible stories about how molecules, like tiny little machines, make life happen. But the molecules cannot be seen, they are too small. Everything that we see, even when looking through a microscope, it's because it reflects or refracts light into our eyes. But molecules are so tiny, they are smaller than the wavelength of light. So the light, light goes right through them, it doesn't even notice them. So we cannot see individual molecules. For the largest ones, we can shoot electrons at them instead of light, because electrons have much shorter wavelength. But this is still not good enough to resolve atomic composition of a, of a molecule. So whenever we want to document what we learned about the nano world, we have to draw pictures of it. And this is very time-consuming tasks task, especially if we want to show entire microorganism or virus detailed enough so that we can see individual proteins. David Goodsell, a molecular biologist at the Scripps Institute in La Jolla, California, is creating incredible watercolor illustrations of bacteria and viruses where you can see individual macromolecules. These images show you how tightly packed with proteins these microorganisms are. He's able to create these paintings thanks to all the knowledge that we have from molecular biology and thanks to his incredible artistic talent. But whenever we learn something new, these images may become obsolete. We have to make them from scratch. And so, in their study of HIV, our collaborators in the Scripps Institute took another approach. 
They use computers to build the most complex model of HIV virus. Through various observations and experiments, they found the structure of an HIV particle, and they made a three-dimensional model so detailed that it contains individual molecules from which the virus consists. But this model was so large that it was very problematic for the computer to show it on the screen. And that's where we came into play. We made a computer algorithm which is able to show the HIV model like this. And it can do so very quickly, dozens of times a second. And that's fast enough to show not only the structure of, a, of, the, of the virus of the HIV, but also create interactive animations. We can now dive in and observe the atomic details of the virus. This is something that no microscope can do. Here you can see the individual molecules of lipids forming the membrane around the virus, and the jiggling atoms of a macromolecule of a protein right next to it. When creating this algorithm, we were inspired by the paintings of David Gutzel. We tried to mimic his unique visual style, which can make illustrations of such tightly packed environments informative, but also beautiful. This technology has huge potential implications on our education system. It makes us rethink how we teach biology. We don't have to wait for months or years until a hand-drawing illustrations make it into textbooks. The illustrations can be made instantly by the computer algorithm, which can reflect all the new knowledge that we gain. With this technology, if a student has a question, the question can be answered with a visual. Because the pictures we make are not static. There are no more stupid questions just because the teacher didn't have a proper illustration at hand. The illustration can be made instantly on demand. But it doesn't stop there. We don't only want to learn about biology, learn about diseases, we want to cure them. Computerized visualization helps us understand how molecules interact, and it helps us find ways how to design drugs that can disable the machinery of parasitic cells and leave our own cells intact. But this is not always possible, at least not with simple molecules. Imagine a nanoscopic robot, which would be able to seek a bacterial cell, dock onto it, and kill it by mechanically drilling a hole into its membrane. This might sound like science fiction, but actually our collaborators in the Austrian Institute for Technology are working on such nanorobot right now. As a building material, they are using DNA. As you probably know, DNA is a very long molecule which encodes the information how our bodies are built. But there is another aspect to it. Thanks to understanding its composition and structure, we now have a technology which allows us to build custom DNA strands that fold into predefined shapes. These could be simple geometrical objects, like a cube or a cylinder. But we can already make complex structures which carry out functions thanks to their physical shape and their reactivity with other molecules. To design a custom DNA molecule that folds itself up on its creation into a functional pathogen-killing robot is no easy task. You cannot do this with pen and paper. But through the power of computer graphics, you can display the DNA strands and their target geometry prior to their creation in a virtual environment where scientists can manipulate them on any level of detail from the overall shape all the way down to individual atoms. And the models they create in computer can be then turned into actual physical things, a self-folding DNA origami. Computer graphics helps us shift the borders of what's possible. Be it the way how we teach science or how we find ways how to cure diseases, there's incredible potential in something that on the first sight might be seen as a useless little game. And as a computer animation can make a child curious about biology, I hope I made you a little bit curious about computer graphics. It could do a lot for us. Thank you.